Hi everybody, Ricky here from Brifford Great Danes, a faith-based Great Dane breeder. Um, just wanted to go over some of my thoughts about choosing a male stud for your female Great Dane, your breeding um, program. Um, so the way I did it was I kind of, I, I dug into her pedigree. So I really... I've been learning so much and this has like been so cool to learn about the lineage and you know who the mom is, who the dad is, who the grandfather is. I mean, you know, if you go to if your dog is registered AKC, you could get a I believe I'm not sure if the furthest is fourth or fifth generation, so you could go back and see everybody that played a part. And what's cool about that is you could go back a few generations and Google um, with the magic of the internet and you could actually a lot of times find photos of some of the family members you could find some um, some of their pedigree info and it's you could see the you know the colors and there's just so much history in there and I love learning about that and it's all new to me um, when we got Dutchess this wasn't a uh, an AKC thing like I just wanted her because we lost her sib the brother her brother at a young age and um and a while later I had an opportunity to get her and I just wanted her I didn't even I I wasn't asking about no registration I had no interest in anything I said just I, I needed a connection to this other animal and it just so happens that she ends up being like the sweetest dog there is so so I'm super thankful. And she came with this, all well, this AKC registration info that I really dug into. And I never looked into this kind of stuff. Like, I, I'm not sure I I cared. I was just more like, give me the cute puppy, you know? And that's how a lot of us, I'm sure, started, right? We buy according to, you know, the pictures or, um, you know, somebody locally is, is, hey, I have some puppies. Do you want one, right? So, like... You know, it depends. Like, I don't have no show history or breeding history, but I'm now I'm learning, and it's it's been fascinating. So, what I, my thinking was, I love the way the brother, the brother and the sister look very different, and not only that, like obviously he's a male. He was a male. So the males are always a lot bigger, especially in the larger breeds. Um, he was roughly 170 pounds, so he was a large Great Dane. Um, she's only 115, so it's a big difference. And, you know, I asked a lot of breeders, I'm like, is this normal to see? And they're like, yep, just like in humans, right? Like the um, the daughter will be like, you know, shorter, and, and sometimes the son's, a, you know, tall huge football player right so like this is just how dna works you know so i really liked brifford's form and i'm going to post some photos i'm going to do a whole video on brifford so you could see him because his form was unbelievable again when i bought him i just seen a cute puppy but as he grew and progressed i'm like like what is this animal you know the great dane's like a majestic um, you know, people say they look like horses. I mean, they're like, he was like a stallion. I mean, absolutely beautiful. So she is gorgeous as well. She has really nice tight form. It's just a different kind of a build. Um, and I guess the male is always going to be a little bit, you know, bigger and different. But anyway, I really just like the whole breeding. So I dug into the mother, the father, the grandfather, the grandmother, and they have a lot of history going back to Europe. So a lot of, on, especially on the dad's side, a lot of awesome kennels that now I'm friends with on Facebook that I've talked to the breeders. And, you know, I even went back and said, hey, do you know this, the father's name or the grandfather's name? They're like, yes, this, he was bred in our kennel. We sold him to the U.S. and, and one thing led to another, right? And that's how my puppy was here. So, um... But following that trail has really been cool. And and everybody's so, like, so kind. You know, I'm just, like, telling them, listen, I'm a kind of be a beginner. I'm just learning about the bloodline and the history. And, 
you know, the people have been really, really nice. Um, so, you know, I suggest that for you as well. Like, you know, if you have anything to go on, any kind of registration, um, you know, you could order a, I think, fourth or fifth um, uh, generation pedigree. And, you know, look into it. Google it, you know, research. Uh, it's, you know, if some people just want a pet and that's different. But, like, for me, I'm looking for, like, a... Um, I'm so fascinated by all of this that, you know, this is like becoming a, you know, it's a passion of mine. So, um, so what I'm, so what I did was I went back to the, the grandfather's breeder. Um, she is, it's a kennel called Lean on Me of Hungary. So it's a Hungarian kennel in Europe. Um, she, so I reached out to her and said, you know, I have a female, she's a little bit smaller, I would add, like to add a little size to her, like I, I want to get a little bit um, of a bigger dog, and um, bigger is not always better, but that's just, a, you know, I, I just, a great thing to me should be a, a presence, you know, so she goes, yes, I have this male, that's um, not exactly her, a little bit of her bloodline, but I guess she bought this animal from another breeder but really high-end champion lines i mean italian breeding polish lines hungarian amazing pedigree that i will share on here i'm going to do a whole thing on the dad that i've chosen for dutchy for dutches so um but i just want to give a little bit of a history of how i'm going about my thinking of how i'm picking a stud yes i could go to anybody with a male great dean you know, in the States, and it would be a lot cheaper. By the way, I'm shipping in frozen semen from Europe, which is going to cost me thousands. But, like, to me, this is a heart investment. So, like, I'm going, I, I want to produce a quality dog that I, that I like, that, that I look at, and I'm like, that's a great thing to me. And to a lot of people, that's different. You know, that's just it looks differently because the, the breed does fluctuate. There's no doubt about it. I mean, some are smaller, some are bigger. You know, some stick to the standard colors, you know, for show. I'm not going for show, per se. I'm going for colors that I like. So she's a Harlequin. I'm going to breed her to a blue male, um, which a lot of people don't like. But the AKC allows it. You could register these dogs. They will be AKC registered. Um... Obviously, they'll be very well um, taken care of by our vet. But so, again, you just have to do what's, what feels right to you, you know. So I, I want to kind of play around with certain colors that are correct, that are not going to produce any issues that are correct, um, correct according to, to health, not to the standard. Um, but so I'm going to, so a Harlequin to a blue, um, a blue male. And I'm getting this this semen imported from Europe, frozen. So that's a whole nother process. Again, another video. So um, that they're going to hold the semen until she goes into heat and is ready. So we're in the process of, of doing that. And again, I could have picked a male anywhere. But, you know, I kind of went back to her pedigree. I wanted to get back to that. There was a connection. There was, you know, Briffer was my first Great Dane. I loved his form. I loved the breeding. I loved everything about him and she is just like like um he was a male so um uh you know not fixed so he had that a little tougher a little more dominance a little more um testosterone right but young he was a young male he passed at 18 months um so she's like she's a little bit older almost three and a lot calmer sweeter um so um so yeah, I mean, just 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 beautiful breeding. So I went back to that, and that that's just kind of my thinking. You know, that's the way I'm going. So again, I could have went anywhere, and sometimes I wonder, am I nuts because I'm, you know, spending? Oh, it's going to cost me a lot. But there's something that stood out to me. Like in life, I make moves according to my heart. Like I check in, and you should do the same. It's just like, you know you go on a date with somebody, right? Or you, you know, you married a certain person for a certain reason. You could have married anybody, right? A lot of different people, but you're following your heart. You know, it's like, even when I go 
shopping for clothing or, you know, we, a lot of what we do is heart based. Um, there's a connection there, right? There's an emotional connection and, you know, this just feels really right. And, um, and I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to be sharing the whole process. So a lot of fun videos to come. I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but there's just, there's so much to this, you know? And of course I'm complicating it by going the frozen semen route. And then you have to do, um, like an artificial insemination. Um, so that's a whole nother thing. So I'm going to get into a, um, the frozen semen video, the shipping, the storing, the, you know, how we're going to, our, uh, artificially inseminate her, um, and the whole process of that. Um, and then a video about Brifford, because he's really the base of this whole thing for me. Um, and then, um, a video about the male that I chose for her. So some like a lot of pictures. I want to start adding some pictures. I'm not the most internet savvy, but I think I could, I'll figure out how to add photos and, um, and you know, grow as you go. So anyway, God bless. Hope some of this made sense. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know why, how you chose your male or, you know, if you have a, a puppy or, you know, who's the father, who's the mother. Like I love the history and, and, and the learning of the bloodlines and stuff, you know, is it American bread? Is it European bread? Because there's a difference. That's like, that's a whole nother video. So yes, the standards are very close, but if you look at the two dogs, you're like, they're pretty different. You know, the Europeans are a lot of like bigger and stockier a little bit, you know, I don't like the loose lips. Like I don't like that too, um, too mastiffy looking, but a nice tight, bigger build is, is what I'm really going after. Um, she's a little bit smaller, a little tighter. So hopefully introducing this bigger male build will, will produce some beautiful puppies. So anyway, thank you for joining me. God bless. Subscribe, like.